I'll just follow up on that and also flag for members of the audience that in a little bit of time we will uh, begin passing out some index cards for those who are interested in uh, asking a question uh, so we can pass them up here and then I can uh, select a few from the group. So if you have some questions that are coming to your mind, think about them and we'll announce a formal spot for you to record them and pass those in. Uh, in a few minutes. Uh, you've had a long-standing principle regarding what you will or won't do on Shabbat, and essentially it's been anything relating to politics is off-limits, whereas you find a way to accommodate pretty much anything relating to governing. So in light of what you just said, maybe just share with us uh, you know, a, a couple of those experiences of needing to, uh, of being put in a difficult Shabbat yeah. situation because of governing, and I'm also thinking another story I think it would be great to hear, which is not a, not a formal act of voting, but nonetheless a kind of responsibility, uh, your walk to the inauguration in 2001, which happened on Shabbat. Uh, so I'll say that one for the end. Um, so generally speaking, when the Senate's meeting on Friday night and Saturday, we know about it beforehand. Sometimes it's kind of a surprise that we'll go longer on the Friday, so it'll be Shabbat will have started. And if I know there's no session the next day, no votes the next day, I'll just walk home. Um, or if I know that there's going to be Friday night and Saturday, I'll stay downtown. Sometimes the gossip comes down, I will try to make a Shabbat in a hotel there. Um, but um, there have been some occasions where that hasn't happened. And th there are two occasions when, and this is where I just had to make a, 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 a judgment, a personal judgment pretty quickly. Two occasions. Uh, during the 90s, one, uh, no, no, one during the 90s, one uh, about oh, six or seven years ago, one during a, a budget crisis when I remember Senator Chafee of Rhode Island now passed away, a wonderful man. I was involved in a bipartisan group with him trying to work on some kind of budget compromise to avoid a, uh, uh, to try to deal with the deficit. Does this sound familiar? <laughs> So it was Shabbat, we weren't in session, but there was a lot of meetings going on, and he sent somebody out to the house and said, uh, there's a meeting that we didn't expect is really important, and please come in. And I thought, okay, uh, I'm, I got in the car, and I, I was taking it. Second one was similar, uh, this would have been 2004, Susan Collins, Senator from Maine, I worked very closely with her. This was about the... Um, reform of the intelligence community after 9-11, I was very much involved in it. And she said this thing, she sent somebody out again, this thing is falling apart, and I know it's sad, but I need you to come in. So I did go in. Uh, in one case, the one with Chafee, the truth is, at the end of the meeting, I realized that I, I didn't need to be there. And basically because nothing particularly came out of it. But then I, I if there's any, I, I, I I should invite you to comment on this. I started to think about the fact that when a doctor is called uh, to go to the hospital to treat a patient who's been rushed there, the doctor doesn't know whether he, he or she is going to save the life of the patient. So you can't judge it that way. But it seemed to me, and the other the other one with Collins was quite um, important, and I felt my presence was productive to get legislation about it. The the uh, the other occasions which are awkward are when phone calls come into the house and. I described at the beginning of a chapter on this very question about when you, when I, I felt that I, I had to do something I wouldn't normally do on Shabbat, a phone call from a colleague, Lindsey Graham, on a Saturday. He would, and I and John Kerry were working on climate change legislation a few years ago. Long story short, I knew in the preceding week that he was thinking of leaving the bill would have been well, probably devastating to our chances it was. He called. But he hadn't made a decision. I talked to him Friday afternoon. He called, uh, we have an uh, answering machine. And I heard the call come in. I wish I could impersonate a southern draw. But he said, hey, Joe, buddy, I really hate to break up, you know, interrupt your, your, your sack. <laughs> but uh, not Shabbat. But uh, I, I'm, re I'm thinking of breaking off this, uh, leaving the energy bill, climate change bill, and I've got to talk to you before I do. So I picked it up. Uh, and I tried to talk him out of it. I didn't. Um, there have been other cases. If I have a rule generally that if anybody in a security position calls the house, like the President's National Security Advisor, or Secretary of Homeland Security, or Secretary of Defense, I'm going to take the call because I just assume it's important. 
Sometimes, uh, I, the last lap is on me, which is there was once in 1990 or 91, I was a new senator, maybe 90, and it's Friday night, we're at dinner, and I, the air answering machine goes on, and I hear a very official voice say, Senator Lieberman, uh, Vice President Quayle would like to talk to you. So I, like, I got to pick up the phone, I said, Vice President, the next day. And he says, Hey, Joe, I, I just, I'm on a plane, I just read that speech you gave about the capital gains tax cut, and I can't thank you enough. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, two, 2000, so um, obviously it was after all the tumult of the 2000 election. It turned out that January 20th, the Chatz, as you say, uh, came out on a Shabbat. And, uh, but, you know, Al Gore was going, and I felt I had to go, or I would, would look terrible, sore loser, etc. So Vanessa and I took a room at a hotel uh, on Capitol Hill. And we, we, we moved in on Friday afternoon. And it was, I don't know how to describe it, it was as if you were a, uh, I'm going to be very parochial, excuse me, Shay. Elliot, time. If if you were a Yale graduate, uh, <laughs> it was the weekend of the Harvard Yale game, and you ended up in a hotel which was loaded with Harvard, uh, <laughs> and the game was over. Now it was after the game, <laughs> and Harvard had won, and they're partying and everything. So anyway, I said, we love each other. And we said, we got to get out of here. <laughs> and because uh, every, uh, every time we opened the door, people would say, hey, Lieberman, I can't believe you're here. <laughs> <laughs> so we, 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 we called our staff first. We said, we got to take us home, get us out of here. We called neighbors who were Sabbath observants, had dinner with them. And then uh, the next morning, it was pretty cold, we walked down. you want to tell this part of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's good. So uh, we, we took the walk, it was about four and a half miles, and uh, at one point we passed by, on the other side of Lafayette Park from the White House, there was like a roadblock we walked through, and it turned out to be the President Bush and Cheney were at this church across the street where they go to a service on a normal day. Anyway, we kept walking, and we got toward the Capitol, and I heard just but as they say, the, the sound of distant thunder, it turned out to be thousands of protesters uh, to the election of Bush and Cheney. And um, there, it just happened that there was no way to get up to the podium um, without going by them. And it was, a, it was an incredible experience because they were so thrilled to see me. <laughs> imagine, why are you walking? <laughs> so, Anyway, and the final thing I remember is that as I uh, walked up on the platform, the, the rest of the senators had already been ushered out. We were a little late there, but this the ceremony had not started. And uh, I had come to know Colin Powell uh, earlier when he was Secretary of Defense, and National Security Advisor, and a Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, and uh, not Secretary of Defense. And, uh, um, I, I knew a lot about his background in the Bronx, so he sees me and he says, Oh, Lieberman, you couldn't even get here on time. <laughs> so he was at that point the secretary designate of the uh, secretary of state designate. So we, we, this was his sense of humor. So I said, Hey, Paul, I thought you were supposed to be the greatest Shabbos boy in the history of the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> and then he says, Oh, Forgive me, <laughs> Senator and Mrs. Lieberman, thank you for coming here on your Sabbath day. <laughs>